Hi everyone, thanks for joining. Um, I'm George, thanks for joining this event. Um, I'm currently studying business and marketing at the Etihad at UCFB. I'm joined by Kyle. Hello, I'm a second year student as well, same course, and uh, we're going to be interviewing Callum Styles, Barnsley midfielder. So, Hello, how, are you doing? how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Good stuff. Might as well jump straight in then, um, start where it all began at Burnley. Um, so, at what age was you first picked up at Burnley? Um, I think it was around about the age seven, eight. I was at Middleton Lads. Um, I think it was playing Sunday, was it? Yeah. Um, at my local team, and then I went. Um, I got scouted for like the likes of City. Um, I went to Liverpool for a bit. Went to Blackburn. And then I went to Burnley and I think Burnley was the one that I liked the most, that I, I had the best feeling about. So, yeah, I got I got picked up about seven, eight years old. Quite early on then. Yeah, I only started football about four, four and a half. So I'd, I'd been here and here, there with other clubs because um, obviously you're young, you're, you're scouted for lots of different clubs. You want to see what it's about. Yeah. Um, if it's too far local, whatever, what you like. So yeah. And then you were at Burnley until you were 16, was it? Um, yeah. How much of a shock was it at the time not to be offered a new contract, considering you were doing sort of well? Yeah, it was a massive shock. So when I was 15, um, I was playing up with the under 16s at the time. Um, I trained. I used to train quite regularly with the youth team, and I played a couple of times. Did I play a couple of times? I might have played a couple of times for the youth team as well at the age of 15. So I was thinking at the time I'm doing really good. Um, only me and maybe one other lad was in the same boat as me. And then it, it became a bit stale, the environment around the, the scholarship um, conversations. That's when I got my first inkling about what, why have I not received a scholarship yet? What's what? And then time went by and yeah they just didn't come around and then the conversation was yeah you're not getting offered one and it took me by surprise like quite a bit I didn't really know what to do um yeah. massive shock to me and the family and yeah we just had to start again yeah so I, I saw all the hard work first and the sacrifices you made um so how hard was it to dust yourself off and go again yeah so obviously like you're in secondary school at that time and your friends are out partying. You're, there's the going out, eating bad stuff at the shops, whatever, whatever. And you kind of got to, you can do little bits because it's not as serious then, but you've, you've got to be sensible and professional. Um, and yeah, so it was, it was quite hard um, at the time to, to then realise, oh my God, I've put all this time effort into into wanting to be a footballer and then I've not got a scholarship. Where do I go now? Like, what's the pathway? I didn't really have one. Um, yeah. So it was a bit of a bit of a stalemate in the process. But, um, yeah, we kicked on. Yeah, so then you went from being at Burnley to Berra. At the time, were there any other clubs interested, didn't you? And why did you feel it was right to go to Berra at the time? So... After Burnley, I went to Sheffield Wednesday, um, and that was I, I spent a weekend there. I played for the, the youth team, um, and I stayed overnight at the Digs. There was a couple of other clubs, um, but then Berry was like the local one. That was the first time going to Sheffield Wednesday was the first time away from my family, so I didn't. It was a bit new to me staying in Digs and and that side of stuff. And that's what I would have had to do because obviously it's it's an hour away from home. Um, Berry just felt a bit more homey feel, yeah. a bit more welcoming when I first came, and they I felt like they wanted me more. So yeah, I went to I started training with Berry, and then I played for the youth team, and they offered me a scholarship. Following on from that, you became the first ever player to play in the EFL, born in the 21st century, when you made your debut at 16. 
what was that like uh, for the experience and um, did that stand you in good stead for the rest of your career? Yeah, that was a bit surreal at the time. Um, so when I went to, when I first got a scholarship at Berry, um, I went straight to the youth team, but I was still, I think this was the time February, February, March time when I'm still in year 11. So I played about six or seven games for the youth team to finish that season off. Um, did quite well. Um, and then the last game of the season comes up for, for Berry's first team. And I think it was two days before I get a letter to the school saying, um, like the club asking the school permission to kind of have the day off before the game yeah. to train with them. So I was a bit like, whoa, this is new territory. Like, <laughs> this is exciting kind of thing. So, yeah, um, I was on a bench. Um, you playing around... then? Say again. Do you remember what team you were playing? Um, South End, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh. South End. So, yeah, I was on the bench. I was, like, the most nervous I've ever been before a game. I, d- I don't even think I ate that much. My stomach was just like, what? around these like experienced pros that have played in the Prem yeah. um, and Championship. So I'm like, wow, I've just come from school like yesterday, stuff like that. So I'm on the bench and then I'm out warming up and I get called in um, to like the assistant and he's like, right, you're coming on. I was like, oh my days, like this is mad. And then I come on, hardly touch the ball. Like, <laughs> I, think, I think I was on for 30 minutes to touch the ball twice. Um, but yeah, the, it was just something I'll never forget. Like, I think, like you said, I was the first millennial baby to make my debut. So that's just a madness in itself. But it was it was a beautiful moment for me and the family and my friends that were there. Yeah. Were you there, George? I was there, shouting his name in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> you played a part in two promotions. Uh, was it that season or was it the next season? No, that wasn't. No, we was just... 2018-19? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how good did it feel to not only contribute to both, with uh, Barnsley and Berry going up? And uh, did you ever manage to get your medal from Berry? Um, yeah, I, I didn't think... I actually didn't get my medal from Berry. I still haven't got it. I messaged people and it's just been shoved away. Like Never get that now. Must have been hurt, but... <laughs> Must have been a good that. season though. Say again, sorry. Must have been a good season. Two yeah, so Barnsley bought me in the at the start of that season, like after the second game. But then they loaned me straight back and yeah. played half a season at Bury. And we was doing really good um in the promotion playoffs. Um like um what's it called? Promotion playoff places, yeah. yeah. And then, and then, um, obviously, it was in my contract that to go back to Barnsley in Jan, which I was a bit gutted at the time because I was enjoying my football at Berry. Like I loved the lads; it was a great group of lads, and it was just a good feel about it. But obviously, Barnsley was my parent club, so I had to go back there, and um, I had to just fight for my place. And then I made, I think it was seven appearances for um, Barnsley towards the end of the season, so. Was it they might seven or more, yeah. So um yeah, it was a bit mad. Two promotions, like I didn't think it'd be possible. Like you don't think that'd be possible in one season because you're only with one club, but then obviously I was with two, so it makes sense. Some people don't get two promotions in a career, so Yeah, exactly. I was I was buzzing to be fair. Yeah. Uh, how much of a confidence boost did winning young player of the year at Barry give you? Um I to be honest, I didn't think that much into it. Um, I don't know. I think just because I was a young lad, then uh, you're still like on edge because you're a young lad. You, although you play games, you're around experienced pros, so you never, I never really settled in to be. Re- like I was all, I'm always relaxed, but I wasn't like a. I'd always be like, oh, this is new, this is new, because I was new to the game and I was so young. Yeah. Um. So I didn't really think much of, of it. I just, like, cracked on. It was a good night. 
had a few drinks like, um, as you can probably tell in my <laughs> interview after. <laughs> um, but that was that wasn't Michael. That was Jacob Mellis's bad influence. Um, but yeah, it, it was obviously really good to get the award. Family were proud, so that that's the main thing. Just making the family proud. Yeah. Yeah. So, did it did it happen quite quickly? The move from Berry to Barnsley. I remember being on Twitter and stuff and seeing nothing about it, and then yeah, refreshing I, it just there. Well, obviously there was in the summer there was talks like, oh, this club's interested, this club's interested, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But that's just interest. You never really think, oh yeah, they're interested. They're gonna buy me like next week. Um, it wasn't ever like that. So I just cracked on. I was like, oh, no one's coming for me before the start of the season. I'm a Berry player. I just crack on. Um, got to like, after the first game, I think it was, and then my agent was like, right, there's some clubs like wanting to buy you. Um, here are the options. Um, like, we, we spoke a little bit about it. And then we was like, right, you just crack on with this game that's coming up and I'll sort out the rest and then it was it more so just clicked into that and then it just happened so it was quite quick for me to be fair yeah so obviously you went to Barnsley how did you find the jump first from league two to league one we going to start a week in and week out in the championship and how did different leagues compare did you go through the EFL um so with Berry, I played in League One, so playing in the League One for Barnsley wasn't anything new. It was just the bigger club status that I had to play for. That was the only difference. Um, going from League One to Champ, yeah, that's quite a big jump, if I'm being honest. Sorry. Um, yeah, so going from League One to the Champ is, is quite a big jump. Um it took quite a while to to adapt. I, I didn't really um, get put in the team straight away in the champ, so I had to, to battle for my place and then it eventually came. And yeah, the the standards just another level from League One, the the pace of the game, the, the quality in the game is just on another level, so you've just got to be on your A game all the time. Yeah. Last season was obviously uh, an interesting one. Um, how was how was the manager, Big Bar? What was it like to play under? Yeah, last season was a madness. We, I, I don't think anyone could have guessed what we would have done at the start of the season. Um, Big Val come in, I, I don't know, maybe seven games, you know, whatever. And he just literally simplified everything. You didn't want to get on the wrong side of him because he was a big guy. Um, <laughs> you, you knew what he wanted um, and that's all you had to do. Like He literally simplified it to the basics and said, do this, do this, do this. And he got us all collectively working like a, a really good machine and, and it showed we came fifth but in the playoffs. Unfortunately, we didn't make the step, but that's football. Um, Anyone can win in the playoffs at the end of the day. But yeah, yeah it was just a, a really good season, a really good experience to just be so close to the Premier League that it's almost surreal kind of thing. Because we was literally two games away from, two or three games away from playing against the best players in the country. So week in, week out. So it was just... A really good opportunity, but sadly we missed out on the opportunity. But the season in all was was really good, and well, I think we did the fans and our families proud. How good of an experience was it playing in the playoffs? And does, did the defeat in the semis drive you in your career? Has it given you a bit of extra motivation? Um, yeah, obviously it's added fuel. Like I want to get to the prem. I missed out that time, but. I'm going to get another opportunity. I've got to make another opportunity. So, yeah, that's that's my end goal is to get to the Prem and then push on from there. 
Um, but yeah, like I said, the, we've we haven't mm, we haven't done as well this season. Well, that's obviously because of different things. But football's full of ups and downs. Yeah. Um, so you never know what's around the corner. Still yeah. quite a chunk of the season to go as well. So yeah, to... exactly. We we're, we're all staying positive. Like we we know what we're capable of. Just having finished off the result, we've played some some good stuff in games, but we just haven't got the final result. So it'll take a while as well to adapt to the new manager's style of play, won't it? Yeah, the new manager's really good though. Um, he's come in, knows what he wants. He's he's developing us a lot on the pitch as well, which I haven't seen a manager do as much. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's good signs overall. Uh, so we're going to move on to the fans Q and A and some quick fire questions now. Um, first one be you. There's been quite a bit of talk about your national team of choice. Um, Attila asks, do you have Hungarian relatives, and where does this Hungarian link come from? Yeah, I do have Hungarian relatives. Um, it's on my mum's side, so my mum's mum is Hungarian. So you're a nana. Yeah. Um, Samantha Skidmore asks, if England came knocking in the next March international break, would you accept? And then, secondly, who's your favourite ever player you've played with? Yeah, 100%. If England came knocking, I'd, I'd be there. I just want to play international football. That's just another, um, another box I want to tick in, in my career. So, 100% I would. And my favourite, what was that other question? My favourite player. Who's played the favourite player you played with? Yeah. Ooh. I think you can name might... a couple if you want. Say again. You can name a couple if you want. If that's too difficult. Yeah. I think for Berry, it's got to be Danny Mare. Okay. Um, on the same team, do you mean? Yeah. Who you played that with? I... Yeah. yeah, I think Danny Mare for Berry for Barnsley. I'd say my favourite player. I'd have to say DK last season. He was a machine. Baxman. Baxman. Um, Stella Steve wants to know what's your opinion on Stella. Stella what? The bit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in all honesty, that nah, I can't say what I'm going to say, but I think it's crap. <laughs> we'll go uh, with that. Callum Styles fan wants to know which is your preferred position to play in and your favourite bands of goal to date? Uh, my preferred position, that's tough. Just depends on the game. Like a centre mid's my my position I've played all my life, but I do enjoy left wing back. Um and we had a really good season left wing back last last season, so uh, I think I'll I'll stick with the left sided eight. Or, or, not, or, yeah, centre mid, I think, is my preferred position. What was the other one? And then what's your favourite bands of goal to date? Oh, I think it has to be Knott's Forest. That when Mudrow pulled it back? Yeah. Scream. Um, she also wants to know, what's the best piece of advice you've received at Barnsley? Oh, that's tough. Um... Oh, that's caught me off guard, that one. <laughs> Best piece of advice. Um, Doesn't necessarily have to be at Barnsley. It could be across, across your career. Believe in yourself because no one else will believe in you until you've achieved it. Inspirational. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ernest asks, what does your daily routine look like as a footballer? Um, wake up. Do you want times as well? Yeah, go on then. Yeah, wake up about ten past seven. Um, have a wash, brush my teeth, get changed. Drive to the meet-up point for the car school. <laughs> meet the lads, drive over to Barnsley. Um, arrive there, get changed into the kit. Breakfast, 
Um, meeting, activation, then out for training. After training, coming for lunch. Um, maybe gym after lunch, depends. And then showered home. And then whatever. Sweet. Each day's different, if I'm being honest. But I do like eating. I'm, I'm a big snack. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you carpool um, when you travel to Basel? Say like, again. Do you carpool with the players? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three of us. Do you want to go with? Uh, me, Josh, and Devante. The carpool trio. <laughs> and then we've got a trio of questions from Joe Wilson, as you might know. Um, okay. Yeah. So if you could play centre mid alongside any current player in the world, who would it be? Any current player? If I'm being honest, does it matter if he's a centre mid? Whatever you want, mate. Right now, Bernardo so because he's on absolute fire. And he he probably classes a centre mid. Either Bernardo Silva, De Bruyne, or Messi. I'll be happy with them too, I think. Yeah. Um, the final question, actually, and the main reason everyone's here, um, he wants to know, Carrot cake or flapjack? <laughs> I um, I've got to say carrot cake. He's made me a few and they've been naughty. So carrot cake's my favourite. Sweet. We move on to some quick fire ones now. Yeah. So United or City? United. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Adidas or uh, Adidas or Nike? Nike. Madrid or Barca? Barca. Left wing back or centre mid? Centre mid. Indian or Chinese? Chinese. Night out or night in? Night out. Best player you played against? Reece James. Champions League or World Cup? World Cup. Assist or goal? Goal. Prediction for weekend? 1-0 Barnsley. Oof. Hey. Ooh. Thanks everyone for listening and thanks to Callum obviously for taking part in the interview and Q&A. Um, throw it over to Kyle now just for the final question. Just two little questions uh, just to finish off with. What are your goals and aims, firstly this season, and uh, looking beyond, how far can you see yourself going in the future? Um, my goals and aims for this season would be, obviously, taking in where we are, what position we're in. Um, my goal would be to stay in a championship with Barnsa, to, to keep him in the champ. Um, I think I'm going to aim for five goals, five assists. What are you on now? One, one goal, one assist. Good time. So, yeah, boots at, on. it's about time I, um, I become a bit more greedy for the goals and a bit more creative for the assists. But I could blame the other lads if I'm being <laughs> that <laughs> joking. Um, yeah, so that, that's my goals for this season. Five goals, five assists. Um, and to stay in the championship. Um, and for the rest of my career, I think my goal ultimately is to play in one of the top five divisions in the world. Um, but ultimately the Premier League. And I'd, I'd love to play in a Champions League game. That would be my ultimate goal. Good stuff. Well, thanks, Callum. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good luck with the rest of the season. You soon. Much. All righty.